think we are going to have another blow off in gold and silver to the point, Elijah, when I come on your show and I say, you may want to think about selling some of your gold and silver. Um, if you don't want to will it to your kids and you want to take some, some profits from that. And we will be, we will get to that point. You recently reported on how, if you compare what the, uh, gold bull market looked like right before the blow off top in 1980 and what this current bull market has looked like for the last about 20 years, it almost, if you overlay the charts, it almost looks identical. So it's like, we could be right before we could be in the time frame right before this blow off top happens where everyone jumps in. Can you expand on that? Yeah. So Nick Laird at gold charts are us a wonderful service of a, a tremendous amount of historic data on precious metals. He's collected. I, that I, that I don't think exists anywhere in the world uh, that, that you can get as a retail investor or retail trader. Uh, has a chart where he's comparing the 70 to 80 bull market versus the one from 2000 to 2022. And they're almost identical. And yes, we are getting to a point, if you look at the, those charts, of uh, where gold is going to spike. Now, we're a little bit ways away. I think we need, I think we really need a big, big crash for it to go to that vertical, you know, blow off top, like you said, but it is steadily following the exact same pattern when you overlay it. Now, it has taken longer for us to get here. But again, we're, we're talking about the end of an era. We're talking about the end of the fiat money era where they want to go central bank digital currencies. That's a shift in the currency system. We're talking about end of the dominance of the U.S. dollar. We're talking about de-dollarization. We're talking about the rise of China. We're talking about bifurcation and regionalization of the commodities trading markets. We're talking about protectionism. We're talking about mercantilism returning. We're talking about all those things, a shift in the economic world order. This is huge. And so this cycle is going to play out a little bit longer but if you overlay the charts, they're almost identical. And yes, I think the same thing is playing out. I think we are going to have another blow off in gold and silver to the point, Elijah, when I come on your show and I say, you may want to think about selling some of your gold and silver um, if you don't want to will it to your kids and you want to take some some profits from that. And we will be we will get to that point. Now, we're not quite there yet. There's still time to buy it. This is a nice little a nice little sideways movement this year in gold and silver. Not up a lot. They're not down a lot. It's a great place to come in and buy if you believe gold and silver a long-term stores value and you believe we're going to have another blow off topping in gold and silver, which I do. Now on our last interview, there was a viewer who commented this question and it has to do with the paper versus the physical price of silver. And they want to know if premiums are so high, why isn't more silver being bought at spot from the COMEX and sold into the supply strapped physical market? So it is uh, going back to something I said earlier, the silver supplies are less than half of what they were. I'm talking registered and I'll explain that in a moment. The available that we know can be delivered on the COMEX silver supplies are down about half, about 80 million ounces versus 150 something million ounces from about 13, 14 months ago. So basically since silver squeeze started, silver has been coming off of the COMEX at, at one of the most rapid rates in history, in the history of that market. If you look at the history, and again, if you go to gold charts or us, Nick Laird, you can see that he's got all that data there for you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's being drained. And what is registered? Registered is what we know is put up for trading on the COMEX. All, most of the silver and gold on the COMEX is private storage. Now, the only way to get that off is to offer higher prices. That's just common sense. So, But a lot of that is also could be pledged to other purposes. And just because it's on in the COMEX repository doesn't mean it couldn't be used in another contract. And, and the CME group, which runs those indexes, came out and admitted that in a paper last year. It's been well-documented. Uh, I put it on my channel where they admitted all of the eligible inventories, which most of the metal sits in. They have no idea if that will ever come back on market because it's privately owned. So you have to strip that out and you have to only look at what is liquid. OK, that's the key. And the liquid silver has just been halved in the last 13 to 14 months since silver squeeze. And uh, yes, people are taking thousand ounce bars of the comics. I did it. Uh, other people are doing it. They're, they're buying thousand ounce bars. Uh, there are people taking thousand ounce bars and slicing them down and selling them in jewelry stores. Um, I'm actually involved in one of those projects. So, yeah, people are taking thousand ounce bars off. It hadn't happened in gold yet, uh, but it has happened in silver. Now, I think it's happened in silver because there's so much industrial demand for silver. Being such an industrial metal, it's going to come first. But I think we're going to see that with gold, too. I think we're going to see – and when you see that with gold, when you start to see gold inventories really come down on the COMEX, then you know that the big money is shifting – their sector rotating away from bonds and stocks and the dollar into gold. That hadn't quite happened yet. That's why I say we've got a, a little ways to run before we see that gold, that next big gold 
leg. But but I do watch it and I do report on it in channel and, and I'll have that for people when it happens. It is quite striking what we've seen over the last couple of years in supply chain issues. And yeah, I mean, with the Russia invasion of Ukraine and sanctions issues with global trade and everything like that, it does seem like things are slowing down and really the whole uh, system is becoming less and less efficient. It's becoming less efficient. And, and I think it, it was not as efficient as we perceive. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, analysis and writing uh, about complexity of systems. And the more complex your system is, the more fragile it becomes. But also the more complex it is, the harder it is to see underlying problems. It's kind of like using the analogy, the dam has cracks in it, but you can't see it on the outside, they're interior. And then pressure builds, pressure builds, pressure builds, and all of a sudden you see a big crack and then you see the dam break. That's essentially the way complex systems work. And we're in a, a highly complex worldwide just-in-time system with highly flawed economic um economic uh, measurements with currencies that were never designed to last. They were always going to hyperinflate. They always have them go to pure fiat and governments that have, have lived off of getting votes from spending more money than we make. And it's kind of like the person that runs up their credit card and then they wrap another credit card and then they run out of credit and then they lose their job. Uh, that's essentially what's happening to the economy and it's all breaking down. And, and I think people are seeing how fragile everything is. And again, going back to one of my original comments, it stairs up, up and everybody thinks everything's OK. And then, like you said, it waterfalls down and we're seeing the waterfall, the, the, the collapse of not only the stock market, but of the underlying economic and trade systems is occurring so much faster than their buildup over the last 50, 60 years. It's, it's astounding. It's almost like we're faced. And this is an analogy I saw the one author put out last week. We're faced with eight lifetimes of bad news occurring all at once, and it's just so much for people to take. But that's what happens when complex systems break down. Everything happens very quickly, and I've called this the quickening. We're in the quickening phase. We're in where the things start crumbling and people see how fragile they were all along. It's very interesting because uh, the the clients that are calling us to purchase precious metals are um, often concerned about – you know, their money in the bank nowadays. It seems like there's this shift going on where it's like people want to get the money out of the bank and then also often get forms of precious metal that will be easy to barter with, like junk silver or silver American eagles, um, all, all the ones that are recognizable. It's like, do you sense that shift as well, that people are becoming more concerned about this currency crisis that uh, and <laughs> the collapse of the global economy? Yes, and I'll use an example. So the other night I had dinner with with a friend of a friend, first time meeting him and his and his lovely wife. And he's a guy that made a lot of money in real estate and in cryptocurrency. Now lives a lifestyle where you know he's living off of of um, off of his investments. No longer has to work a full time job. Certainly very affluent. And he said, "Rob, you're a gold silver guy. How do I get gold silver?" Uh, this is a guy that's completely shifted his thinking from traditional. Um, financial view to, I need to protect and go into precious metals. How do I do it? Where do I store? He's asking me all these questions. This is an affluent guy. It's basically like, I've been a part of the system. I benefit from the system. It's time for me to get the heck out. And not only that, but he's basically planted his uh, location flag. I mean, he's, he's living down in Mexico now, essentially. So he, he moved out of Canada. You know, certainly we've seen all the issues that Canadians have had. And you talk about, you know, bank accounts. It, when the Canadians froze, certain accounts related, you know, to, uh, to the whole you know, trucker dispute uh, using basically equivalent of emergency powers like we would see here in the U.S. I, I think that raised everyone's awareness of the fact that the government has now has a hand into your personal finances. And you may not be able to get your money when you need to. And we're not even talking about the, the chance of fragiling the banking system in a bank run, which I think we're going to see more whispers of and more mentions of as we get further into this economic crisis, given how leveraged the banks are. And all the losses cascading down from the economy are going to affect the banks and their accounts. Um, the banks are highly levered. We know that um, through their inability to meet Basel standards that have been out since 2014. So, yes, people are more and more getting smart, understanding the risk in the system, not only understanding the economic risk, but political risk, banking risk, finance risk. Uh, the risk is going up, and that's why I often preach risk management. I'm a risk management guy. For 25 years, I was in technology, but also in risk management type of roles, audit, um, tech, cyber security, those types of things. I, I counseled, you know, billion dollar companies, including banks on, on business process and dealing with risk. And so I have this big background of risk and you can see the risk elevated. I mean, it's blatantly obvious for anybody who looks at it. 
And yeah, I think people are flocking to precious metals. Now, it's not reflecting the precious metal spot prices because that's a derivative price. It has nothing to do with the actual retail trade. But, you know, kind of transitioning into that, it may be one of the next questions you'll ask me is, yes, even though the prices have the, the gold and silver prices are down from where they were a few months ago, the physical trade is booming. And you can see it on the COMEX. The COMEX registered inventories are, are less than half of what they were about 15 months ago. And that's a big exchange. It's being pulled off of the, the exchanges. And, of course, we see premiums rising because the spot price, which is determined by derivative trading, paper trading, does not reflect the actual demand. That's why the pre premiums have raised. So, yes, I think, you know, encapsulating all that, yes, people are moving into the precious metals. I've got Bitcoin people moving into precious metals. Uh, it, it's happening. And because I think that they see that they need to diversify away from some of their more traditional investments. And also because Bitcoin's down, I think people see that they need to diversify a little bit. Uh, the last point I want to make, and I'm being long winded here, but Bitcoin is down. Going back to what I said before, it's down more in the stock indices. And Bitcoin is not acting as a safe haven like gold is when we we are clearly headed to recession. The stock market is pulling back into a, into a nice little correction here. Uh, Bitcoin hasn't acted like a safe haven. It's sold off. And I think people are realizing gold sold off just a baby bit. But year to date, gold is down just a tad and silver is down just a tad. It's nowhere near down where Bitcoin is and where the stock indices are. And and it, it's nowhere as bad as the rise in bond yields. So it's not bonds that are safe haven. It's not currency. It's not the dollar. People are going to gold and silver, and that's why their prices are holding year to date better than, than some of these other investment classes.